Live from Dancing, it's the mouthpiece with Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the mouthpiece. I'm your host, Brady Matthews. Uh, what a crazy, uh, slow weekend of sports. <laughs> <laughs> but we found juicy stories for you guys. Uh, a lot of good stuff to cover uh, leading up to the Super Bowl. Did anyone watch the Pro Bowl? Does anyone give an F about the Pro Bowl? Uh, what's a sexier story, Pat Mahomes or Brock Purdy? Um, Pat Mahomes' dad is in hot water. He's looking at 2 to 10, but I have a good feeling he's going to be just fine because it's Pat Mahomes' dad. Uh, also, does LeBron James have a New York state of mind? Huh? Eh, eh. Also, Apollo Creed is passing. All right, he's passed. And it's sad, and we're going to talk about it because he has so many good clips. But with that said, uh, let's get to my team that helps me get through the mouthpiece. To the left of me, he's our all-pro. He's our special teamer. He's value teamers, value teamers one and only, Chris Mano. Nice to be here again. Thank you so much, sir. Good to see you, Chris. Excited I like that jersey. You. Thank you. Yes, everybody likes the jersey, right? Kobe. Yeah, hell yeah. One of the greats. Kobe played in the, in the NFL, right? I don't know. I found it online, and I was like, I can't leave it there. I like it. It yeah. looks good on you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I like that we're wearing white on white. We look like if Wonder Bread started a, a, a boy band. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> next, to, next to Chris, uh, he has the best chest hair <laughs> in the east side of the 95. He's, uh, he's, he's the best. He's our MMA specialist. Uh, give it up for our boy, Ray Sherwood. <laughs> yeah, rip it off, dude. <laughs> and the man behind the computer. He's our favorite. He's the best. Uh, he gets all our clips for us. He's Cleveland's darling. Get it from Malik Hudson, everybody. The Terminator shit. Guys, how are we feeling? How do we feel about um, how do we feel about Apollo Creed passing? Does it? Man. It, oh, made, it made me sad. It made me sad because uh, it, a lot of good memories with Apollo Creed. I think growing up, Malik, we were gonna end with this. Let's just start with this. Let's just get it. Let's just get the the ball rolling, if we will, because nothing gets you more pumped up than than a good old Apollo Creed cl clip or just mm. a Sly Stallone clip in general. Because I remember I would watch this with my dad and it would just pump me up. I remember just punching the TV as hard as I could when I'd watch Apollo Creed and Rocky go at it. The training videos too. The yeah. yeah, the training montages till this day. Oh yeah. yeah, they always circulate through the playlist when we're training. 100%. Yeah, no, I still listen to e uh, what No Way Out. Yeah. There's no easy way out. There's try to no play. easy way out. Yeah. And try to play that in front of people who don't understand and they think you're nuts. See, but, here's the thing, yeah, too. 100%. If you're going through a hard time, this is the song you put on. And also and it go helps. for a long drive. It also helps if you have a Porsche <laughs> and you know the tunnels to go through going <laughs> 120. In the dark. It has to be yeah. at nighttime, too. <laughs> yeah. Do we have that, Malik? Can you pull that up? Yeah. Throw it on. Cue it. Oh, it's the best. He was so jacked. Look at how jacked he is. He's also you know he oiled played, up. He played for the Raiders, too. You know that? Did he really? He played for the, yeah, he played for the Raiders. Jake, you know that. There's like a famous clip. O.J. Simpson actually came out this week, and he's talking about how Carl Weathers consulted him about acting one day on the football field. No way. Kind of weird, because O.J. Simpson, but... Can you pull up the one where he's driving through the tunnel? That one's amazing. Another iconic one. Also, I look like I'm sponsored by Sly Stallone with my champion sweatshirt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't look any whiter on camera than I do right now, but that's fine. We live in Fort Lauderdale, and we're going to fix that. <laughs> it's okay. Me and Mano decided to just white on white, just white out. <laughs> it's, the, it's the snow mouthpiece edition. We um, can play the montage, but we can't play the audio due to copyright reasons. Oh, really? Yes. That's the best part. We'll just you realize how vital no the audio is. Yeah, you you realize how, how vital as the play. audio is when you watch the montage without it, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I'll sing it for you guys. Rocky's got the – dude, look at that. Is it a Ferrari or is and it a Drago Corvette? was an animal, too. He was an animal. Holy cow. You know what's weird about Drago, though? is that I always thought that was his sister in, in uh, Rocky IV. Uh, that they was look, Stallone's wife in real life. I know, yeah. dude, but they, don't they look like they could be brother-sister? <laughs> yes. They She's do. just as tall yeah. as his ass. <laughs> yeah, imagine the freaks they would have bred in real life, though. For sure. Holy Anyways, cow. this was the best, dude. I loved watching these. Uh, Rocky always had the best montages, especially mm -hmm. if you're going through something. Mm -hmm. You put this thing on, you get in your uh, 92 run. Celica, yeah. and then you just drive down the freeway. What do you think the odds would be nowadays that this guy training out of a barn, though? Who? Again, Rocky training out of a barn yeah, versus oh no. uh, in chopping Russia? wood yeah. versus Drago, who's sauced to the gills Look at, those on are these the crazy right machines. There. That's the best, dude. 
That's the best. Even, right. even the ending was it Rocky too? He goes, all right, ding, ding, and then the iconic yeah. boom. They yeah. stop it right. Those into guys had to crack tiger. each other in real life on that oh, punch, yeah, right? Yeah, they were mean, too yeah, close. that was a real punch. That there's was a, a real whole punch. thing. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. Look at there's a whole thing where they're punching yeah. each other and they're, they're. But also, I mean, even the dialogue. It's like it's literally like a um, a dance. It's you know, it's like ball, It's like yeah. it's like cadence and everything. Totally. Of course, yeah, you have to figure out where the other person's going, and then also they would knock each other out occasionally. But I mean, that's the best thing about sports movies like that. I think that happened with Michael B. Jordan in the new Creed. Too. It did. I think he got tagged on the chin and he dropped. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Anyways, rest in peace, Commitment. Carl Weathers. Rest um, in peace, Carl Weathers. The he great. was the best. Also, in um, all his Adam Sandler movies were hilarious too. Chubbs, Chubbs with the <laughs> fake wood hand. Yes. I mean, come on, dude. That, I think that was like what brought his career. Oh, right back there, to, yeah. That, that's great that, too. That's an iconic right there. Look at that. Yeah, even, <laughs> with Arnold. Even, sorry, dude. And I, listen, even in Predator, he was great. Yeah, Predator was a. Phenomenal Everyone had movie. their thing too. There was that one guy that would shave his face. Yeah, yeah. What was that? And like it cut too. Yeah, but also I was going to say was like Jesse the Body Ventura. In that Yes, all. but I'm saying, like, if you're a method actor, you know what I mean? And you, they're like, all right, what do you got? He's like, I got a cool gun. He's like, dope. He's like, I'll shave Arnold. my face. He's like, what do you got? He goes, I got this accent. He's like, dope. He's like, what do you got? He goes, I'm going to shave my, my face. face. And they're like, what the fuck? Every time the camera's on. That's me. your thing? Okay, here we go. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess Arnold used to mess with Jesse the Body, too, on, on that stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, were always, they were always messing Imagine with Imagine being on the set of that, though. That was pre, uh, what is it, Expendables now. Like, that's like, know, yeah. the Expendables is yeah. like 20 all years the now. The more of action yeah. stars all on one day. It's crazy. sad because now you just see a bunch of guys putting hair dye in. Yeah. Uh -huh. And nothing looks the same. Struggling. And we're supposed to believe they'd still win these fights. Yeah. yeah it's tough. It is tough. Uh, speaking of, let's, uh, Super Bowl's coming up, and we're all very excited about Super Bowl. I can't wait, even though I think I know who's going to win. And I do have a prediction what's going to happen at the end of the game. Uh, our boy that works here, Vic. Uh, he agrees with me on this. Malik does not, but we'll get to the. Well, I haven't even heard. I'll, I'll I'm excited. I'll tell you. Yeah, we're gonna get to it. But I was, I was, I was thinking about this. I was looking at the matchups, and we were talking about it last week. We were talking about the matchups, and we were talking about the rosters. And I was thinking, do we really dissect the quarterbacks? Because you know we've heard so much about Pat Mahomes and Brock Purdy, but my question to you guys is, what's the better story? Who's the sexier story? Because I was thinking about this. Um, the Chiefs had a good QB with Alex Smith, but if they traded up in the draft to pick Pat Mahomes, they didn't have to do that, right? San Francisco stumbled onto Brock Purdy, coming back to the Super Bowl after four years. They got a new QB. It's Brock Purdy. So if also if Brock Purdy, did you know, beats Pat Mahomes? He will have the best first two seasons uh, of a QB ever as Mr. Irrelevant. So what's a sexier story? The Chiefs drafting up to get Pat Mahomes or Brock Purdy being Mr. Irrelevant and being in the Super Bowl his second year? Well, here's the deal. I don't know that they are the focal points of the story in the sense that Brock Purdy is not the centerpiece of that San Francisco offense, whereas Patrick Mahomes, everything begins and ends with him. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like, I... Purdy's doing the great job at what he's asked to do, but at no point is he relied upon as heavily as Patrick's relied upon on the other side. So I don't know that his numbers or anything will ever be as sexy as Pat's. But, but there's but Brock Purdy also <clears throat> has his first two seasons is actually very impressive. I mean, yeah, super he, impressive. He, 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 you know, but but you're saying as a Mister Irrelevant, right? correct? So in theory, how many Mister Irrelevants have been quarterbacks and stuff like that? So yeah, Tom what Brady? he's doing? <laughs> no, well, Tom Brady was a Mister Irrelevant. Yeah. Mister Irrelevant's the last pick in the draft. With Tom Brady, I mean, yes, I know Tom I Brady, that, but yeah. I'm saying mm -hmm. yes, close to Mister Irrelevant. Correct. So so yeah, I mean, look, what he's doing is a phenomenal thing. But, I mean, at the end of the day, he hasn't won anything yet. He went out in the, in the NFC title game last year. Trust me, I don't want to take anything away from him. He's playing awesome. Every week he's doing something that I'm seeing <clears throat> that makes me think he's better than I initially thought he was. I don't know. I, I think it gets crazy when guys start. You, we, we don't realize what Patrick Mahomes is doing and what Patrick Mahomes does year in and year out. Here we go. Like, There's a stats. He could have uh, – Patrick Mahomes could have a game where he throws uh, – Three touchdowns and a pick Can you make those for 298 bigger, yards and rushes for 50 My yards, and we size. say it's a bad game. You know what I mean? I mean, look at those stats, though. That's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, for, for 31 2000, and 11, that's, that's yeah, it's it's awesome. It's great. But that would be Patrick's worst year. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you and also I have get to give it. it up for Shanahan, too, who's, who's you know. And, and that it sucks because it sounds like I'm demeaning what he's doing, and in no way am I doing that. Because like I said last week, I'm incredibly impressed by this guy. And every week he shows me something that he didn't show me, you know, the week before. So I'm, I'm like I said, I, I'm, I'm very so you, impressed. So, so you think the sexier story is, is what? What's the sexier story? The sexier story is the, story is the guy Mahomes. who's making a run at the best quarterback of all time. 
You know so what I mean? So Brock Purdy wins this, by the way. He's going to do. He's going to do something that yeah, no quarterback sick. has it. ever done. Awesome, I love it. and, it's, I, and that, it's a great story. And Brock Purdy, it's awesome. And the reason why, at least, we're thinking of Patrick Mahomes right now is because he's already been in the league for quite some time. Right. For Brock Purdy to have these numbers early in his career, and maybe that's something we could look up, or the guys watching as well, looking up how um, Patrick Mahomes' earlier seasons compare to Brock Purdy's. There you go. So let's see. Well, let's step back and think about it, though, right? Brock Purdy wins this game. We talk about him for the next five months until next season starts. Is Brock Purdy a top 10 quarterback in the NFL? Uh, I would so, say, I mean, listen, from what well, he's shown, I mean, he can handle off, pressure he in was, the yeah, for sure. He's in, in the, the NFC the, championship he, game. He, he handled he was all awesome. the pressure. He was, was awesome. in the run for the MVP. Well, from this, look, like, not now, look, but, but if you he All right, well, here's the deal. This is how I usually gauge where guys fall. 32, uh, 32 GMs in the league. How many are picking Brock Purdy over Mahomes, over Burrow, over fee, uh, over Hertz. Well, they saw something over. in the su- in the Senior Bowls where they saw him. They saw him in the right. Senior Bowl. Right. But they waited till the last pick in the draft to get him. They let seven rounds pass. Right. Everybody's picking Burrow first. Everybody's picking Lamar Jackson first. Everybody's picking Justin Herbert first. Right. I don't know how how much. I mean, we can definitely just pour praise on him for what he's doing. It's an incredible thing. But I mean, he's going to go down as like a 12 to 15 quarterback in the league right now yeah. after this season's over. Still, nobody would start their team around him next year. Yeah. And I know I hate this because it sucks. It, again, it sounds like I'm demeaning what he's doing, and no, I'm really it's not, not. it's not at all. But I mean, it's just it's, it's impressive from a guy from Iowa game. State that was Sick. picked seventh, yep. 100%. seventh round. I agree. Uh, left, left for dead. Well, not necessarily because I know a lot of guys were looking at him to um, – be a third string backup. Sure. But Malik, what do you think? Do you do you have any insight on this? Do you do you like Brock Purdy as a sexier story than Pat Mahomes or you think Pat Mahomes is still the guy to um to cheer on? Uh yeah, I think it depends on the NFL script writers like what narrative they want to put. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, like, <laughs> my guy, dude. Come on, my man. He knows how to tug yeah. on my heartstrings. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see like, how the script is debunked this uh, yeah. weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what else? Uh, Mr. Ahead, Relevant uh, winning a Super Bowl, that's always a great story. But you can also talk about the greatness of Pat Mahomes and how he continues to write his name in history. But uh, I think we give uh, Brock Purdy too much credit for the success of the 49ers. They have – one of the, if not the best defense, they have all the weapons around him. Like, all he has to do is just get in the car and not crash it. He has the keys. He has I everything. I like that. Good, good analogy. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Like that. Look at you coming up with yeah, the analogies. And let me just, can I just touch on, like, a sidebar please, that drives me crazy? Please, Chris. I, I loathe when they say quarterback versus quarterback. Like, how does J- uh, Josh Allen against – Josh Allen hasn't beat Patrick Mahomes yet. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Josh Allen's never been on a field against Patrick Mahomes. They never take into account the defenses. Like, these guys never play against each That's other. Josh point. Allen had an awesome game against the Chiefs, but he'll always get that stigma of he can't. And look, this is from a Chiefs guy. Yep. So it's, it'll be Josh Allen can't win in the playoffs. It's like Josh Allen puts up 30 points every time. He's the best runner on his team. He pretty much, yeah, he, he throws the ball over the, the whole field. Team. So it kind of drives me nuts when these guys say, like, quarterback versus quarterback. I'm like, I mean, but then also, I think when people say quarterback versus quarterback, you can you can look at how do they handle the pressure? How do they sure. uh, take a game over? Right, and that's what Josh Allen sometimes has to do. And of so course. far, from what I've seen, he hasn't done it. Well, look, he, he was he the reason the Chiefs with 13 seconds left on he marched them down, he took did. the lead, and then with 13 seconds left, yeah. Patrick Mahomes went full Patrick Mahomes on him. Yeah, but then also the guy missed the kick, and he was lights out all season. And suddenly he misses the kick. Like so, it's all about pressure, dude. It's all about those last sure minutes or last of seconds. Course. And uh, it's all about pressure. I just, I just hope e- uh, Brock Purdy is the Eli Manning to Tom Brady as he is to Patrick Mahomes. So I hope he does that upset. Yeah, I hope so, but I highly doubt. I it. didn't. I'd be dead honest with you. I was we'll not. See what I was never an Eli Manning fan because uh, he just looked like he was like one step away from working at Home Depot. <laughs> you know How do saying? you guys like Bro- you like the Brock Purdy story, but hate that then? Brock no, no, Purdy. no, no. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Um, I just want San Francisco. I just think to the win. Brock Purdy thing. <laughs> I just want listen, San Francisco. Everything to win. about Brock Purdy is sexy to me. Even the name Brock, like you know what I mean. Just like the, I don't know. It's just it's just one of those names that he's just such a quarterback guy. Brock Purdy. Like I see the the name Purdy on back at jerseys for like ten years from now. Mm-hmm. Like Joe Montana. It you think Brock Purdy is the quarterback of the 49ers 10 years from now? I do. You 100%. do. Yeah. Okay. He's still living on his uh his like best buddy's couch or something. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. still under his like yeah. Mr. Relevant contract. Yeah, yeah the, ro- the rookie contract. Well, well, that, and that's the best thing, right? Because that's how all these teams win in the league. When you have a quarterback still on his rookie deal, you haven't paid him yet. That's how He's hungry. that's how the well the thing is that's how the Seahawks won before they had to pay Pat uh Russell Wilson. Yep. They had the whole Legion of Boom under contract. Then Russ comes up for a deal and you can't pay anyone else, you know? That's the beauty and the craziest thing about the Chiefs is Pat gets paid 450 
and somehow they lose Cheetah, they lose um, Chavaris Ward, yep. and they still find a way every year to with these plug and play guys to. I mean, look, the anchors are always there. Pat's there, Trav's there, Butker's there, Chris Jones is there. The rest of these guys kind of like just like spokes in a wheel. Throw another guy in, throw another guy yeah. in. That's what's so crazy about what the Chiefs are doing now. Well, speaking of throwing another guy in and, and uh, moving, the, moving the chains, if you will, um, Caleb Williams. There's a lot of talk about Caleb Williams possibly going number one, probably going number one to the Chicago Bears. Uh, as a dire Chicago Bears fan, I know I talk about it in every episode. <laughs> I am a dire Chicago Bears fan. But a lot of people are gunning for this number one pick, as they do. As they do with the NFL draft. That's what they do. Uh, everyone wants that pick. Uh, the, De the Denver Broncos are offering, I just saw this, the Denver Broncos are offering um, Patrick Sertan and the number 12 pick and the 2025 second, second and third round picks for um, Caleb Williams to move up to the number one pick. I'm like, that's not happening. Another possibility, Justin Fields to the Raiders for Devontae Adams. I'm like, what? Devontae Adams is 31. Justin Fields is 25. Why would I go get a 31 wide receiver for a 25-year-old kid that still has a bunch of upside? So these are the things that people are throwing out there. So I was sitting here and I was thinking, and I want to ask you guys, do we keep Justin Fields or do we draft Caleb Williams? And I'm going to throw some stats at you real quick, okay? Caleb Williams um, in college uh, took not so many, didn't take as many sacks as Justin Fields. Justin Fields took 56 out of 579, 9.6% of the sacks, and held on to the ball. Caleb Williams did 89 out of 1,099, uh, and 7.5% was his, his rate. So the comparison, um, so another comparison, guys that held the ball that are great, Lamar Jackson, 101 out of 1,086, 9.3%. Josh Allen, 49 out of 643, 7.6%. .6 Josh Burrow, 7.7%. 7 .7 and Jalen Hurts, 6.5%. So all those guys have great stats too. But what I'm saying is uh, Caleb Williams had um, not an offensive line in college and also didn't have the stud wide receivers or running backs that Justin Fields had in college, right? So um, Caleb Williams, in the first three rounds of the draft, zero of his offensive linemen got drafted. In Justin Fields, almost all of his guys got drafted in the first round. First round, um, uh, Kay, or I'm sorry, Justin Fields had first round Garrett Wilson, Jackson Smith, Naj Najiba, and then Jam Jameson Williams and Chris Olave. Michael Williams, or I'm sorry, Chris, um, uh, Caleb Williams had Michael Woods, seventh round, Marvin Mims, second round, uh, Mario Williams, projected seventh round. So my question to you guys is, do you take a stab at Caleb, Caleb Williams knowing that in college he didn't have the weapons that um, that Justin Fields did. Do you take a chance on Caleb Williams saying he's the next Pat Mahomes, or do you build off Justin Fields' um, potential, which he had his best season this year in 2023? The problem is he holds on the ball for too long, and he th overthrows wide receivers. With all that said, Mano, what do you think? Well, look, everything begins and ends with do the Bears believe in Justin Wood and Justin Fields, right? Yeah, I think they do. Uh, They've shown over the last couple of years, I mean, he's shown the ability to make stuff happen in Chicago. Now, the difference, now we got to take it back just a little bit. What he's got with the Bears in the NFL is significantly different from what Caleb Williams is dealing with at SC. So whether or not his, his uh, line is getting taken early, simply the competition in the Pac-12 Compared to that Big Ten competition or SEC competition, it's, it, it's really it, it's kind of Wait, hard. To, go ahead, Malik. What'd you say? No, I was just agreeing. Uh, Whatever you about to say, I feel like it's like Pac Ten versus uh, yeah, Pac Twelve versus Big Ten. Right. There's no competition. Yes. Yeah, I it's, mean, I get I get that. I get then, I get that. But but look, um, and then I think actually a big thing that happened late last night that I think might have been overlooked. And yeah, I've been hearing a lot of stuff about Denver, like you. Uh, but what I think happened, a big thing that might have gotten overlooked is Cliff Kingsbury. I saw that. Right now, Cliff Kingsbury he pulled was, out. He, well, he was slated to go to the Oakland Raiders, uh, to the Vegas Raiders over the last couple of weeks. Going to join Antonio Pierce. Uh, he's been an, an assistant offensive coach at SC for the last few years with Caleb Williams. Right. So now he's the new OC over in Washington who holds the number two pick. 
So it, it's not a huge jump in in. I mean, they're going to get a haul for it if the Bears decide to make the move. But if the Bears see something in a Jaden Daniels or they see something in a Drake May, Drake May, but don't, don't say don't say Drake don't, May. You're going to give me Mitch 2.0. Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> give me if you okay. can get Love a you, if you can get an absolute haul for that number one overall pick and believe in one of these other two guys. I think Jaden Daniels is a good pick. You could slide back to two. Get your Jaden Daniels, your franchise quarterback, and you can go retool and reload. You could take everything that Washington has. So you like Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams? No, I don't. I didn't say that. But, I mean, the difference might not be so much. It, I, I think I might like Jaden Daniels, two first-round picks, a young player, and other pieces over right. just Caleb Williams. Because the Bears need, uh, they need a, lot of, That's what I'm saying. a lot of players. So you may trade back one spot. If you like Jaden Daniels, say you have Caleb Williams at a 9.5 and Jaden Daniels at a 9.1. I think all the extra stuff you could get from just moving one slot, and you know nobody else is going to sneak in there because it's your pick at two then. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's going to be a big a – big, um, an important factor in, in how the first yeah. round Ray, goes. Ray, what do you, know? you think? You think, um, you think the Bears go get Caleb Williams? You think you stick with Justin Fields, depending – or seeing what J Justin Fields can do on the field? What do you think? So I said it, what is it, a couple episodes ago. I'm going to yeah. double down on Tyler Bajan. I'm sick of this shit. Oh, yeah. All right? We got to go and try him out a little bit more, all right? <laughs> I like Bajan. his father. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. He's going to motivate the offense. Yeah, we like need that. to get Tyler in there. Yeah, I like And I feel yeah. like also for you, at least yeah. personally, maybe I don't, don't want to no, speak for you, no, but I feel like please. you said earlier as well, mm -hmm. you said Justin yeah. Fields is not the guy, Brady. <laughs> dude, I'm trying to gauge I off said, the No, I said Dak Prescott's not the guy. I'm but trying I also to get yeah, 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 yeah. right now, Brady. Hold up, hold up. I'm trying to gauge off a Ray's face if he's serious about Tyler Bajan or not. Yeah, 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 for sure. No, come on, man. Oh, oh. You got to know. Well, I'm looking this at is, him. This I'm looking at him next to me, show. and I'm saying, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, come on. Okay. This is on our first row. Okay, I mean, listen. <laughs> I feel better. The, the kid was good if you needed a kicker. Um, but he's not. A, he's, not well, he's good until you get film on him. Like, yeah. like a lot of these young players, they, a lot of guys can do things before you have film on him. He's not an NFL quarterback. Um, Malik, I want your take real quick, though. What's your uh, What do you think? Caleb Williams, Justin Fields, they go for Caleb, or you keep Justin? Uh, I think it's dumb for the Bears to give up on Justin Fields so early. Really? I mean, like, yeah, I, I feel like they he haven't had, gotten him. He had four him. seasons. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> what does he have? Is He has his pick up his fifth-year hey. option, give him one more chance, and then next like year that. you try again. Hey, so and like, then, why so start from zero with a rookie when you don't know what he's going to get? Hey, Malik, check I this out. Yeah, what's up? So, so imagine now you slide back one pick, you believe in Justin saying. Fields, and you go grab a freaking generational animal out of Ohio State and go grab Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, you get his DJ ball. Moore on one side, Marvin Harrison, oh. Cole commit and then you have that and then you have the dual threat Justin Fields I'm not kidding you dream come true Marvin he's Harrison crazy. Jr. is, a, right is a once in a generation wide receiver he's he, the best he is. best receiver prospect I've seen since Megatron hands down it's crazy anyways so, and he's not going to fall past four no, no way uh, yeah, moving on. Worst he's AJ Green. I feel like who right. is it? Potential really? Wise. Listen, I'll Two take AJ. I'll take AJ Green right. in his prime any day. Three exactly. time all pro. Yeah, for for real. Guys, a stud. Yep. Uh, speaking of in their prime, it's not Pat Mahomes' dad. That's for sure. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> he is the worst supporting cast, doesn't he? I mean, he really does. I I do, I. I feel bad for I mean, I don't feel bad for him because obviously Taylor Swift is in his box on the outfit. He looks homeless. His dad <laughs> just got his dad just got arrested on his third DWI. He's facing two to ten years in prison. Do I think he's gonna go to prison? No, I don't. Because uh, he's got some people in his back pocket I think that can help him up help him out. Um, I don't know. Also, can we play the clip of Pat Mahomes' brother who just happens to ruin every single every single time the, the camera comes on him and he just ruins Ruins the moment is what he does. <laughs> Watch this guy. He's a goofball. He's like, oh, he's like God. look at him. Yeah, I wish a tomato would oh, just crack the audio. Okay, Six yes. foot five, Great. and oh, this God. is what he's doing. Gotta love it. Oh, come on, Jackson. Ugh. I'll tell you what they know. Would just hit him as for, hard hey, as, for, they can for as much hate as Taylor Swift gets for being in the yeah. box all the time, she took the attention off of this knucklehead for a year, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I wonder. Right, we didn't have to see much of him because all the talk was about Taylor Swift. Does he have I, a real job? You think? No. He's, pa he's His real Patrick job is Mahomes' a brother. And he's a TikToker. He's yeah. an influencer, right? Yeah. yeah. So he just goes to parties and gets free stuff. Come yeah. On. His whole gimmick is I'm Pat Mahomes' brother. That's it. That's all he posts. That's How long it. you do that for? That's all. That's like Sly Stallone's brother. He just walked over. He's like, "I'm Sly Stallone's brother." You're like, yeah, I know. But well, you know, until Sly. Sly Stallone's not hot anymore, you know what I mean? If I Patrick know. Mahomes has another ten years, ride the train, right? I, I mean, guess. I don't know. The guy's so awkward and also super awkward. Pat Mahomes' wife. I mean, she's cute and everything, but she's awkward as well. They're all awkward. But the dad, I feel bad for because 
He lo- it kind of looks like a cute little troll doll, doesn't he? With his hair. <laughs> he <laughs> nailed it, actually. <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, yeah. it I don't side know. Side by side. The thing that's great about the Super Bowl is you really don't know what's going to happen on or off the field. And I thought some of the things. I also was going to ask you: Is this a distraction for Pat Mahomes? Does this bother him, or is he, or is he, you know, it's still full steam ahead? This doesn't bother me. This is it's, my family doing whatever my family does. It's definitely a distraction, but in terms of when it's game day, I, I doubt it's going to affect him. But, you know, that's his father, and depending on the relationship that they have. I think they're very close. Yeah, well, yeah, then, the, yeah. then that's it 100% is a distraction. Look, in my athletic career, I've learned a couple of things, and I've never been anywhere near Pat Mahomes. I've never been anywhere near a Super Bowl. But I lost my pop when I was, you know, younger. And, yeah. and to me, the only time I wouldn't think about the craziness that was going on off the field was when I was on the field. Right. So, I mean, I, I, you see a guy like him. We've watched the quarterback show. This dude is incredibly dedicated. You don't get to the level Pat Mahomes no. is at. So he's going to dive into this game plan for the next week. You're not going to let something like that get in your way. He's got people to handle all of this craziness. off. I'm going to tell you what, the biggest distraction for these guys now is getting tickets, getting family sorted in. What right. can Patrick Mahomes do about his dad right now? What you do as an athlete, it's very, very important that you learn to compartmentalize things. You control the things you can control. You don't touch the things you can't control, right? Like Patrick Mahomes – Junior has no say over what happens with his pop, who made a silly decision. So Patrick Mahomes is going to let the lawyers handle that. He'll fork over the cash, and he'll worry about this game plan, getting his family tickets. And he understands how much his life changes with one more Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Of course. So of course, yeah. He's chasing. He's chasing Tom Brady, right? That's it. That's uh, it, Malik, does this bother? Does this bother the uh, the Super Bowl for Pat Mahomes, or is it just all, all systems go? Yeah, I think it's this is just all noise in the background. He can worry about it later. I feel like he should be more concerned if Travis Kelsey got called with a DUI. That's more alarming. I mean, that would be that would be really bad. Own father being that would be really DUI. bad. But he, I guarantee, I mean, he could still play in the game. You yeah. know what I mean? Just can't drive there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think, Ray? Does it bother him or no? No, I mean it, it bothers him. But in terms of you know game day and you know prepping for the Super Bowl this weekend, it's not going to affect him mentally. You know, in terms of being an athlete, my whole life as well. You know, when you're dialed in, you have to be able to you know switch you know from the personal to you know yeah. to game and, that, to, and it's action. So it's a big. And when you're and when you are an athlete, you understand this mentality. So the biggest thing is actually channeling that you know whole preparation to that final moment. This is it. Yeah. You know, this is what you've been working for a whole season. 100%, that's a distraction, but he's going to channel that out leading into this weekend, and he'll, he'll show up during yeah. game time. Couldn't yeah. have said it any better, Ray. At yeah. that level, everybody there – so this is the deal. Everybody there is athletically gifted. It's the guys who can separate themselves mentally – that reached the status. I mean, we talk a lot about it on this network, right? The value attainment stuff. Yep. Uh, great. Like all these guys up on this wall over here and girls up on this wall over here, they're able to kind of hit a place mentally that the rest of us regular people just can't seem to tap. Yeah. Into. It's just like a switch that goes off That's in it. their head. That's it. That's it. They yeah. Just, yeah. Well, I guess a, a couple of people that the switch did not go off in their head uh, that messed up before the Super Bowl. A couple notable guys that did Warren Sapp. <laughs> was arrested in 2010 in South Florida and charged with domestic battery. He was pulled from the NFL network temporarily, and eventually the charges against him were dropped. I don't know. I guess he got too wasted at the club and beat some people up. But that's Warren Sapp doing Warren Sapp stuff. You know that's I mean? classic Warren Sapp. Wouldn't have it any other <laughs> yeah. way. The best, Warren Warren Sapp Sapp. Sapp. the best Warren Sapp memory is, or he talked about how the media would have to be like, like a little bit farther away from him because he would spit on towels. Yeah. <laughs> Remember what kind of athlete Warren Sapp was? He was a freak. Uh, Eugene Robinson. For the Atlanta Falcons, Mm -hmm. Robinson was arrested by an undercover female police officer posing as a prostitute as he offered her forty dollars for oral sex. Forty bucks, (laughs) jeez, man. Down bad. Tough times before the Super Bowl. (laughs) Where are you shopping for these chicks, dude? He was a first round pick too. He was. He was awesome, brother. Yep. Uh, Robinson's performance on the field the next <laughs> evening, the, the, his performance the next evening wasn't much better as his blown coverage allowed Denver Broncos wide receiver Rod Smith to haul an 80-yard touchdown reception. And I think the most notable one of mess-ups is Barrett Robbins. Yes, yeah, it was a doozy. This one was kind of sad because this guy's been in and out of um, drug and rehab treatments. Yeah, for sure. But uh, instead of getting ready to face the vaunted Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, Robbins <coughs> disappeared from the team hotel and went on a drinking binge in Tijuana, Mexico. The Oakland offensive lineman was so incoherent that he actually thought his Raiders already won the game. <laughs> 
Yeah, his was the one that probably impacted the game itself because he was actually a very good player. He was awesome. And the fact that he went down before the Super Bowl. Like, the other ones weren't super – didn't have huge implications on the game. Barrett Robbins was a good player. And sometimes you get a party to get to the party. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, he did. He was that's, prepping. That's what he said. He quoted that. <laughs> uh, speaking of speaking of a party, but a party that we can all uh, be a part of, this is uh, Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh is doing the Lord's work. He really is. I thought this was pretty cool. Before he departed Michigan, Harbaugh told um, – this media personality, John Root, around who notes that uh, 70 players on the Michigan team got baptized this season and asked what led them to the mini revival in the Wolverines locker room. He said, there, Harbaugh said, there's a spiritual mission to our team. And yeah, I'm inspired by that, Harbaugh said. It's inspirational. I want to ask you guys, uh, why? Because I saw when C.J. Stroud, thank God, after their playoff win, they totally deleted that clip, and they took God out of the equation. Is it distracting in sports, or is uh, is there something else going on? And I think, I mean, you know yeah. my take, but <laughs> what do you think, Mano? You're a Christian man. Yeah, certainly something's going on, right? I think it's awesome. They, they, they've done, it looks like they have made a conscious effort to try to eliminate us particular religions from, you know, from the the game right and cj stroud is one of those guys who's kind of on the forefront now he does make it something he speaks about all the time which is super cool in a time that it's not cool to talk about it right i remember when i was playing man everywhere we went we had a we would have like some opportunity to do this together before the game we used to call it the fellowship of christian athletes and whether it be college or in the league they would have people come and make sure that we were able to you know to take a couple of minutes pre-game you know practice our faith we would pray together as a group. They just yeah. and that's what a lot of them. That's what a lot of them they, do too. They, they go to the fifty yard line and they pray. And that's, yeah, and, you know. and and they could they try to make it like it's not a huge deal. I mean, some guys have been just straight up ostracized from the league. Like I think honestly, a big part of why Tim Tebow didn't last longer is because granted he, yep. he wasn't an All Pro quarterback, but they could have found a role for him in the league. I think I think they let that become a monster distraction. And Tim's actually a friend of mine. Yeah. So to hear him talk about how uh, you, yeah, ever, you ever heard perfect. about you ever heard about Tim Tebow uh, one of his last games. And he, when he put the uh, what did he put the John three sixteen. You but did you have you? I that mean, was we, we don't have time to pull that, it all that up. That was actually in college. And yeah, that game that game how he bro broke the, down. He looked on the clock and it said three sixteen. Yeah, how many passing yards he had was three sixteen. And, and then it was incredible. And you realize the like the massive massive. And this might be part of why they don't want it to be such yeah. a big factor. There it is like such a massive outreach. Tim Tebow has John three sixteen got so many hits on Google that night. Yeah. it almost like crashed the algorithm. And that's I mean look. I, for it's whatever incredible. weird reason, they don't want people talking about it. But when you see the the power of Tim Tebow or athlete like that getting behind the Lord, it's it's super cool. Yeah. It's nice to see C.J. Stroud and big ups to uh, John Harbaugh for doing it too. For it's sure, cool. Ray, are you a religious man? Do you find this distracting, or do you think it's necessary in sports? I mean, there comes a point. I feel like it, no one's really taught. Like C.J. Stroud, he just brought it up. I want to thank my you know Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's fine. Right. We live in America, freedom totally. speech. Hundred percent. There's no reason for anyone to just you know silence that at all. Meanwhile, we, you know we have teachers you know teaching kids some crazy shit. Yeah, that's teaching, totally I, fine, and yeah. we could publicize that. Not to get on that subject. No subject. I know. I get it. But it's a sports show, it's right? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> Jesus. But there's no reason for athletes to be censored, which is also, you know, we'll, we'll get into a little bit later, which is also why I respect Dana White is because he, does, he doesn't censor his athletes. Mm -hmm. He has freedom of speech. Let them talk their, you know, whatever they need to speak. Yeah. He goes, that's fine. You know, I, I don't like these, you know, different leagues being able to censor, you know, certain people's, you know, beliefs. For sure. Why not? Another guy who doesn't uh, censor himself at all is uh, Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Moving on, to M moving on to NBA news, Chris is a big fan of Stephen yeah, A. Smith. Fan. I can't stand the guy personally, but his but his <laughs> takes, yeah, he's got Chris has a tattoo of him on his back. <laughs> he loves him. Yeah, he loves Stephen A. Dude, yeah, he's younger my Stephen A. Not older yes, Stephen my A. Favorite. Younger. Yeah, Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> Just a wealth of sports knowledge. His high yeah. school oh picture. The latter I the the latter I talk, uh, the more authority I have. Yeah, uh, Malik, can we play the Stephen A. Smith take? Because LeBron James is talking about leaving, but they're also saying he might be going to New York. But if you have my take, I think it's a bunch of hot air. But let's see what Stephen A. says because he's a diehard Knicks fan. So oh, yeah, he's a real, yeah, die-easy Knicks fan. Wants to put himself in position to win a championship. Get traded to the New York Knicks. Oh, my God, come on. Center stage, Madison Square Garden, the Mecca. Oh, God. You see that defense? You see Tom Thibodeau coaching his defense. Did you see that brother Jalen Brunson and what he does? 
Do you see Julius Randle and the workhorse that he is? You know Mitchell Robinson's coming back. You know that, right? I've heard. I mean, Hartstein's a big body active. He's been feeling in admirably since Mitchell Robinson has stepped away. Dante DiVincenzo, uh, that brother's been stop playing. It. Stop it. Stop it. Dante DiVincenzo, he's not that great. OG and Anobi trade. 32 the other night, though. Did LeBron he? LeBron James. He's shooting the lights out, dude. There's very few Villanova's things very that own. are more valuable yep. than Tinseltown, La La, oh, God. Los Angeles, California, purple and gold. But if you ever wanted to leave, a 39-year-old LeBron, the though? New York Knicks got, like, 11 picks over oh, the next seven years. You're the Los what? Angeles Lakers. All right. You need picks. Stop it. Stop it. Right, they do need picks, but I don't know if that's the route they want to go, oh, so per se. Malik, what do, you, what do you think of LeBron going to the Knicks? Do you think it's good? Do you think, do you think it's – I don't know. I am so tired of this. Like, yeah. they've been doing this since LeBron. Yeah, this is been this is I'm almost as tired as this, this is Taylor most, Swift. I'm not yeah. even kidding. This is the most worn out like sports fantasy to ever exist. 100. Like, dude, I'm I was so a Bulls fan. I was I was a Bulls fan 10 years ago, and he was talking about maybe going to the Bulls or going to the Heat. <clears throat> I literally cleared my schedule to watch him for the for him to announce who he was going to go to. Remember the announcement? Yeah, I remember that. I was like, I was front and center. And I was like, he, I was like, oh, he might go to the Bulls. That's like when Kobe was might go leave the Lakers and go to the Bulls. Never happens. It never happens. And LeBron's going to stay in, in L.A. I, I think he's going to stay in L.A. Or he's going to go to Golden State. He's not going to go to New York. Why would you go to New York? Tom Thibodeau's a great coach, but he's a defensive coach. LeBron doesn't like to play defense. LeBron's a shooter. He's a scorer. So, I mean, if, besides DiVincenzo and uh, Maxi, where's the other guy they got? They just got from the Raptors. They just got OG Ananobi. O, yeah, OG Ananobi. That kid's a stud. Fine. Okay, but I just don't see the pieces in New York. What do you think, Mano? So oh, yeah. I actually do disagree with that. I okay. think for the first time, it is actually a possibility. First and foremost, if Stephen A. Smith, uh, the, the, the most fair weather brother, like yeah. he's just oh, that was God, he's so brutal. That was good. He's so brutal. Like this guy wants to be a Knicks fan when it's, when it's like uh, the time to be a Knicks fan. He's yeah. the worst Knicks fan ever. But look, a uh, couple things. At this point in his career, LeBron James is only going to a place that he can win. Right. The Knicks, man, is as crazy as this sounds, they are in a good position going forward to be a winning team. The East, if if LeBron James somehow got himself to New York, the Knicks suddenly become the fast track to the through the Eastern Conference Finals and probably to the finals. Do you think they now, give they, they give um they give the Bucks a run for their money or oh, 100%. I think right now they beat the Bucks a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I know. Jalen Brunson is becoming a bona fide star in he's front a, of our eyes. He is a star, yeah. He's he's crazy. He reminds me of John Starks a little bit. He's John Starks at well, but John way Starks better. is a six, way better. Yeah. Way better. Yeah, he yeah. can do a whole bunch of different things. He's the most fundamentally sound player I've seen in a really long time and probably the first real Knicks star that I've seen since Patrick Ewing. Now, here's the thing. Now, I don't I got to be honest, as a Knicks fan, I don't want him. Like, this guy has had There's multiple wow. chances to come to New York, and he's teased the fans, and he's dipped. Now, the, the interesting part about now is it's the first time that he needs the Knicks as much as the Knicks need him. Yeah. In all the past years, the Knicks would lay out the golden car, uh, red carpet. They would beg this guy to come here with very little to offer and just hope that he would come here and save the day. Yeah. Right? right now, LeBron needs a team that's built to win. And the Knicks need one more guy to probably get them over that hump. Yeah. But you know what they say in relationships, right? If you don't want me at my worst, you I don't want you at my best. You yeah. don't deserve me at my best. Yep. So for all those years that my this ex guy said that to me and then kicked me out. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, but I didn't mean to do that. That's right. That wasn't my intention. It's okay. Uh, but I get what you're saying. We, yeah, like, let's move on. Let's move on to um, – you brought this up. The Michael Porter Jr. talks yeah. equal pay for men and women hoops. Right. Can, you, can you walk us through this? Because I looked at it a little bit, and I kind of – disagree with you on it so this has gotten a ton of traction on social media it was michael porter jr can of we the play Nuggets. the clip real quick yeah go for it man. yeah malik play the clip and show ping pong player they're just as talented as, as a like the best ping pong player is just as talented as the best basketball player that doesn't mean they're going to get paid the same because it's because right. they it's play what, ping pong it's what the people want to watch you know what i mean so right. as much as i understand I like analogy. wanting the same treatment as as men basketball players is is it's, it's a different sport people they're not packing out the arenas obviously their tv deals aren't the same so as much as i advocate for women and kind of the equality of the respect of their craft and all those things i mean you can't pay them the same thing you know but i do feel like they should there there should be a little way to make a little bit more money for them because they yeah, are it's called endorsements talented. just get endorsements yeah, I, think the, I, I think the big thing um obviously when you're thinking about negotiations labor unions and different things like that 
I don't believe there's any woman that believes she should be paid as a man gets paid. It's more about the revenue share. It's right. more about right. the so, percentage. Absurd, though. Yeah. And I think right. that's good. Um, I, I don't know. I listen. WNBA is its own entity. There is a market for the WNBA. There's a lot of girls that are inspired by the women that are in the WNBA. <sighs> I'm all about. Sadly, and I don't know if this is going to come off wrong, but I'm all about dunks. I like the dunks. I like the. I like. Um, I just like the fast pace of the NBA. WNBA, don't get me wrong, is amazing. And Caitlin Clark that's coming in from Iowa this year awesome. that's going to play in the WNBA, you're damn right I'm going to watch that because she's awesome. She's the, she's the second coming of Steph Curry with a ponytail. She's fantastic. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. With that said, I do believe that they need a little bit more incentive, a little bit more cash for sure. Go ahead, Chris. But you can't give these girls cash that doesn't exist. So here's the deal. They talk often about wanting to be paid the same as men. What you don't understand, though, is the WNBA is now about 25 years in, and they've never been a profitable business. Yeah. They, are a, they are funded by the NBA and the money that they make. Then they talk about you know, percentages of revenue sharing or revenue splits. And the NBA, which makes billions of dollars a year, the, the players actually get a smaller percentage of the money that's brought in than the women get for the money that's brought into the WNBA. So if they decided to go ahead and revenue split, the girls would actually lose money because they yeah. don't make money. Yep. And I'm, I'm a big proponent of getting paid what you're worth, but for a certain groups that are making this argument right now, be careful what you wish for. for because sure. if this goes and happens, what's going to happen? You, you may just swallow up the league altogether. There's... It's basic business. If there's if a business is bringing in money, there's money to be had. If there's yep. no money coming in, there's no money to go out. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it sucks to say no, because I, these girls are absurdly it. talented. But it, with a ping pong analogy, it is a bit of a different game, right? It's a different sure. game. Also, I don't know if I would start with a ping pong analogy, but that's where he went, and yeah. that's how he. Did Ryan it. Clark's a smart dude. It's kind of funny though. I mean, yeah, I, a funny I don't know if ping pong analogy would have been my first yeah. first take. <laughs> I think fine. he was trying to get at that. It's just a, it's it, a yeah. different game. You I know? get it. Speaking of um, a different game, these guys are on a different planet because Steph Curry just scored 60 points the other night against the Hawks, uh, and LeBron James is, has shows no signs of slowing down. And these guys are well over the – I mean, they're over, they're over 35. Uh, Kevin Durant's playing lights out. He's the number one, he's, he's the number one scorer in the NBA right Get now. Um, my question for you guys is – these guys are older, and what I saw growing up, when you hit over 35, besides Michael Jordan, and I guess besides also Tom Brady in a way, is it better technology? Ray, do you know in terms of like MMA and stuff like that? Is it? Do these guys have better um, doctors? Is is it better? For like, sure. is it all just way better technology that can help these guys heal faster? Yeah, compared to a decade ago, for sure. I mean, with with our coaching now and the technology we have for rehab recovery, and I think that's also it's more frowned upon now than it was back yeah, in the they didn't day. Have cold plunges There's no back cold, then. I mean, that's not a trend. You know nobody was doing cold plunges yeah. nowadays, but also nobody was really uh, like. I'll be honest with you, even me now training like. There's certain aspects that I've learned over the years. This is just recent, yeah. so never mind on a professional level, is where now that's being adapted into a, re a regular training uh, regimen. So rather than maybe 20 years ago, you used to just run your body to the ground. Now people are starting to understand that rest and recovery is twice as important as the training aspect of it. So I feel like now that's being put you know, on display and you're seeing athletes being able to perform at a higher level. What do you think, Mano? I mean, did you have, these, uh, did you have facilities that were um – able to get your body back up and running as fast as you can because you know you had a bad sports injury and that's yeah. what made your career right well i was pretty fortunate i got to I, I had the luxury of training at a bunch of awesome places img academy being the primary one and yeah it was incredible look it's cliche but they're absolutely right nowadays whereas the old the old adage was first one in last one out nowadays it's more train smarter not harder you know what i mean these guys obviously the recovery methods are different the training methods are different the money that these guys make and are afforded the ability to invest back into their body, LeBron James, Stephen Curry, these guys, Russell Wilson, these guys are literally investing millions of dollars back into their bodies because they understand that your body is your tool. Right. If you're an athlete, you have one of these. Once it doesn't work anymore, there's no more sports for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, with that, something we spoke about last show was the changing of all these rules. Like, it's much easier to last in the NFL now when oh, they sure. can't hit me very much. For sure. It's much yeah, easier we... to last in the NBA when they either can't defend me or any, like, semblance of a hard foul is a flagrant. And so guys are laying off a bit. So it's a bunch of different things. It's kind of perfect time to be playing. And, 
Yeah, these guys at, at LeBron, KD, and Steph at 39, 35, and 35 are still, Yeah, I mean, 28 I wish, a game for Steph and, and KD, and LeBron's still doing LeBron things. It's, it's, it's incredible. When Jordan was 39, he averaged 24 points a game, six rebounds and five assists, and one – uh, 1.5 steals and 0 0.5 blocks a game. Jordan scored 51 points at 38 years old, 350 days old as a wizard. LeBron is 38 years old, 319 days old today. I mean, uh, if Jordan had uh, what these guys have, I think Jordan would have probably played until 41, 42, don't you think? I think on the short end, yeah. 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 Anyways. Mm -hmm. And um, he would have joined on a team where he had some help. If you look at that Wizards roster. Yeah, it was not great. I mean, not loaded, right? No, so he no. was relied upon to do a lot no, more. No, he was trying to pull are. teeth with Kwame Brown, but it wasn't right. happening. Uh, Ray, you said uh, UFC fight night, 235. Can you talk us through it? What happened? Let the people yeah. know. For sure, yeah. So this past weekend, UFC uh, had a fight night. Of course, we're getting into uh, you know a whole, I think it's 11 weeks straight now of fights. So great. I'm very excited. Right. The holidays Sick. are over. So we're... Uh, Is there a know, build up when it comes to UFC fights? I mean, I'm not, for sure. a, for, not for, a huge UFC guy, but I'm saying they build up the, the um, weeks, right? For sure. To the big dogs. For sure, yeah. Of course, we have main cards, and, um, you know, we have uh, UFC 298 coming up in uh, two weeks, not this week, and the following weekend uh, after with Alexander Volkanovsky and uh, Ilya Teporia. Very excited about that fight. Um, but there's always build up fights, and, and I think that's a, you know, a, a solid part that US, uh, the, U, uh, the UFC does in terms of promos is actually building those fights up and having the guys that are, you know, prospects. Uh, you know, prospect fighters, having them on the UFC fight nights and then being able to build them into the main cards, depending on, you know, their their star power, their following, of course. And one big thing I've always learned about uh, in terms of at least combat sports, mm -hmm. once the cameras are on you, you have now become an entertainer, oh, for which sure. a lot of these people and a lot of these fighters are starting to realize you're not just a fighter, you're an entertainer. People want to see you not just fight, but what are you outside of the octagon as well? Right. But, you know, recapping, there wasn't a really big names th these uh, this past weekend. Um, you had uh, Themba Garimbo, who's all a huge UFC uh, what prospect. What a great name, by the way. Yeah, right? Themba uh, Garimbo. Themba Garimbo. Jeez. Um, I, I put in the, uh, the link right there. Malik, you can probably pull it up. But he went viral for The Rock. Uh, the guy was basically homeless, living oh, in yeah, his gym you have a, you have a with clip on $7 dollars in it, to his name. So The Rock surprised them at the gym and bought him a, a house How nice to live is that? In. Can The Rock come to my yeah, place? Yeah, no, and buy, buy a house for us. Jesus. You know? Seriously, man. <laughs> Do we, have, we have that link, I think. But uh, Yeah, we got it. You got it? Can we pull yeah. it up? Okay, cool. Yeah, he went viral for this. Oh, here we go. Just a heartwarming story. We can't do the audio copyright? Probably. 27 bucks to his name. Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Yeah, this is him. Buys him, him an uh, this yeah. is him buying an apartment, yeah. Is this in Lahaina? Too soon, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> My bad. I think we all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, this, this was just a great story. I mean, it, it, and a lot of his credit, and he even said after his post-fight victory, he thanked The Rock and for his continuing uh, supporting him through his career. So... The, the Rock looks like a like a uh, if an armadillo was a human. I mean, like the guy doesn't age. You know what I'm saying? Look at his tight skin. Yeah. And wonder why does he how, get bigger? How he does that, <laughs> why does he get bigger? I wonder how at fifty something he <laughs> just, does that. Dude, he just looks like he's been in the sun all day. Yeah, that's, that's good for the. Kid. Uh, all right. But, well, hey, that's great. But, that, what a great heartwarming story. What can people look at look forward to for UFC this this coming week? Oh, uh, so this week we have another fight card. But I was going to say for the past fight card, I feel like this is hilarious, though. Uh, Hanato Maikano stole the show. With another his great post name. Well, yeah, gra another great name. Say that five times fast. With yeah. his post-fight interview. I know we put that, um, we put the the interview in the clip. But um, l lackluster, I would say, fight. Um, you usually see him in a nice stand-up battle. I know he tried to stand up with uh, Hafa uh, Vazi. Yeah. But, Ha having said that, he kind of, you know, just took down Drew Dober, just laid on him a little bit. Nothing really crazy in terms, but his post-fight interviews are always the funniest. So, I mean, he, he went off this weekend. <laughs> he did? <laughs> yeah, on, a, on his uh, post-fight interview. He always swears during it as well. Oh. So, <laughs> if we, you pull up the clip, did, it's hilarious. Do you have a clip of that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely want to see that, for sure. Yeah. Just, he just starts just going off? Yeah, he starts going off. He starts talking about how his father at 62 years old is having kids and how he's going to go home after his this His father's fight. having kids at 62 at years 62, old? At 62, and now he's said he's going to go home and impregnate his wife <laughs> after the fight. <laughs> after that. Oh and my he's, God. And, but this is what I mean in terms of entertainers, because now he wants to be able to stand okay. out. Let's so, play it. Yeah, yeah, I I play it. it's it. hilarious. This is the guy? I think this is my Uber driver. You're here with yeah. Money yeah. Boy Cardinal. You're here 
again? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> You're just swearing the entire time. Boy, Cano. <laughs> oh. Cano. Can, what a can fight. Can I talk to you a little bit? Yes. My father is 62 years old and he had a baby yesterday. So, bora oh papai, God. eu te amo, seu filho da p***. <laughs> 62 anos botando um menino pra jogo. Eu vou ter que ter um outro filho. I'm telling him, tomorrow when I get home, I'm gonna get my wife pregnant another time. Because <laughs> if my father, 62 years old, can populate the world, I can too. Money Moicano 3 is coming. <laughs> Oh my god, That's some dude. Good genetics, Money Boy His wife at home is probably just, she's just American, trembling. You know? I'm not American, but I will be. What is bringing, bringing that heat home? Is that years, what? In two years, I'll be a American. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they and after awesome I'm fight done with fighting, there. I will serve on the police officer. I want to be a SWAT team, and I want <laughs> to great. kill the bad guys. Man, make right. no mistake. Cut it. That's great. That Fantastic. Yeah. Good no. for him. What a, hope, what a character. I, I I want, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out and try to have him on. Yeah. <laughs> please have him on. Yeah. yeah. He's hilarious. He's telling, dude. He's, he's gonna try to impregnate one of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move on, guys. Let's move on to the good, the bad, and do we care? Speaking of MMA, I was watching uh, stuff on TikTok because I'm a lonely single man, and uh, I was watching. I looked at this clip of Connor versus the Mountain. This was him preparing for Jose Aldo. Can we play that clip, Malik? Uh, the the comparison is out of control. Look at these guys. <clears throat> uh, if I would uh, push all my power into him, look at him. I would crush him, crush him. He can't even blink yes, right. He's so, so big. I had a sparring session with him, uh, just a joke one, uh, as, uh, a little a while ago before his big fight against Alto. I had to uh, hope. Well, but Aldo's not very big. I don't understand what would be the... You look at him grabbing his head, dude. It was, it was oh just a God. joke, though. I mean, let's put it... There's weight classes for a reason. As skilled as Conor McGregor is, yeah. if that guy gets a hold of you... Yeah. You're done. He crushes your head. <laughs> yeah. He crushes... I would like to see him and Andre the Giant go at it. Like, if Andre the Giant was in his prime, that would be a good fight. Especially them two, because what McGregor does well is the on-feet stuff, and this guy's just going to bring him to the ground. And he just comes at you him. and grabs you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I the mean, mountain's the humongous. Yeah, Six, you, eight, no, if you're three gonna, seventy yeah. something, I think. If you're gonna beat that guy, you better have something very, very big and very, very sharp. Well, he's got to hit him with a liver shot you, or a gun. Gotta, yeah. Oh, you got you got to <laughs> chop that dude down and try to. The only way is if you got to yes. get him on the ground and get his take his back. Right? I, I mean, know. yeah, he what did. Are you gonna he, do he did a joking. He uh, he actually grappled Gordon Ryan and Gordon Ryan. They actually did a full on grappling session. Gordon Ryan choked him out. But yeah. Gordon choked out the mountain. Yeah, choked him yeah. out. But he actually was Gordon Ryan's. I think six two two thirty. Is there a video so of that? There is a video of that. Yeah. Malik? I, I don't know if you want to pull it up. But let's pull it but up. Yeah. I definitely Gordon want to Ryan see that. choked him but out. How though. long is the fight? Does it take like 45 minutes? or? No, it... it depends on the clip. But they, oh. they're, they're rolling around, and then Gordon Ryan gets his back, gets on top, and just chokes him out. Can you explain out. to the people at home who's Gordon Ryan? Including Gordon himself? Ryan is probably the best current Brazilian, no gi Brazilian jiu jitsu artist um, in the oh, world right now. Yeah, this is them live live rolling. Gordon's also a decently big guy, too. Sweeps him. How big is Gordon Ryan? Dude, Six two. You that's see, the that's the you mountain, see Gordon right? Ryan from the yeah. bottom. He was able to flip yeah. him. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, beautiful sweep. He gets his back. This is the, this is they're really going at it right now too. He's trying to like actually defend. Dude, the mountain. Gordon is a, Ryan is probably the best jujitsu artist as of right now. <laughs> Grappling artist in the world. Wow. Yeah. That's that's impressive. Yeah. That's very impressive. Uh, this by my good. Uh, Chris, what do you have? What's your good? So my good is the FIFA World Cup uh, decided last night that they're going to hold their final at MetLife Stadium where the Jets and Giants play, where they are notorious for having terrible turf where guys tear their ACLs all the time. Well, good on FIFA. They have something in their deal that doesn't allow their players to play on anything but natural grass, something that I think the NFL should probably take a look at and injury rates down significantly. So good on FIFA because they're going to play up there where normally it might be a dangerous thing. They're going to take that out of there. They're going to lay out some beautiful new grass, and it should be an awesome final. Nice. Well, we're looking forward to that, and hopefully mm -hmm. um, they can play a nice match of soccer. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, why don't you talk about soccer on this on this show? And I'm like, eh, we'll get there. <laughs> we're wait, we're waiting to. until there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> uh, and then, okay, so going to our bed. Chris, take it away. This is your bed because my bed is not so bad. It's kind of good mine is griselda this i watched this on the plane last night uh for two seconds before i passed out but it was so good it's um it's a female cocaine dealer she's the most notorious female to ever do it and it's based on a true story it's on netflix i highly recommend it if you like narcos you'll love griselda also uh the actress that plays it what's her oh sofia vergara mm -hmm. um so, so hot but she looks kind of nothing like Griselda, but some, some, some weird way she does kind of look like her. 
Um, anyways, that's been my bad, but in a good way. What's your bad? All right, my bad is uh, NBA veteran Tony Snell. Now, Tony Snell has been in the G League all year. Uh, in the NBA, you need 10 years to get a pension and medical benefits for your kids. Uh, Tony Snell was making a plea this year for one team to just find them, find it in themselves to sign him for the rest of the year so he could qualify for his pension. Tony Snell has two autistic kids. Damn. Not one team stepped up to the plate and signed Tony Snell for the last 40 uh, games of the year. He will not get his pension this year. And I thought he had, a, he had a pretty big deal, though. For I think he has a pretty good contract. He did a couple for, years ago. He he uh, stopped playing for a couple of years. I think he was going through some things or whatever. He but had uh, kids, probably. Now he needs 40 more games whenever it may be, to qualify for that last year and that lifelong uh, health benefits for his kids. And, and uh, he made a plea to teams to do it. I think one of the bottom dwellers might have been able to find spot for a veteran, but yep. nobody did. So. I see overseas basketball in his future. Well, I don't we'll know. See. Just my take. Okay, and do we care? Who's your do we, do we care? Go for it. My do we care is former NFL uh, great running back Le Be Le'Veon Bell, yep. 31 years old, been out of the league for a couple years, kind of – he was a, by the way, he the was Jets. a stud for the Chiefs. No, no, he was a stud for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was a stud for the then Chiefs. He, oh. he was not a stud for the Chiefs. I promise you. Okay. I promise. No. He signed with the yeah, Jets. He signed with the Jets and absolutely just bottomed out. They signed him to a huge deal Saw after that. he sat for a year. And then the Chiefs signed him for a Super Bowl run. I don't think he played very much with them, but he's trying to make a comeback. Thirty-one years old in regular people years, not super old. It could be done at thirty-one, but do we care? Did, did he, did no, he knock don't. out Adrian Peterson in a boxing fight? Yeah, they boxed. He sure That's, did. That's how far away from yeah. the NFL he's been. So Chris, yeah. do people still want to get hit? Uh, as because I know I'm a grown man, yeah. do you want to get hit by another man at 31 years old, like getting dented in the knee and then just getting back up and playing again, or is that drive for that sport that like are you that hungry for it? Well, look, there's a lot that comes with it, man. Fame is a crazy thing for people, but I mean the the pain, uh, the hits, providing you're not substantially injured. The, the hits hurt far less when that check comes 17 times a year. Yeah. I promise. A guy like Lev Bell is getting a million bucks every game, so it's like uh, – Listen, I'll take the hits then. That's yeah. fine. Throw me out there. Yeah, man. All right, and then also ending on this, NFL football uh, – or NFL football, the Pro Bowl yesterday was on, and I don't know if anyone even actually no. watched it. Malik, did you watch any of that? No. No, I watched a couple of highlights, but nothing. Yeah. Not but well, well, then what are we doing? Why do we have this? Because it's almost like – It's ridiculous. It's, it's, at this point, it's almost like um, – it's almost like watching a home run derby in a way. I don't yeah, know. No one really who's, who's no one cares that? anymore. There's no real there's no real thrill to it. The well, only thing I saw was CJ Stroud throw a, a dime to Jamar. I saw uh, Jamar I saw Chase. I That's saw uh, Tariq Hill run around Tariq Hill. like uh, like it was literally out of a video game. Like CD Lamb I saw a couple yeah. of highlights of. Yeah, yeah CD Lamb. Great. It's cool for offense. I mean, it's flag football. So these it's, guys It's fun. Like it's one of those things where it's fun if you're there like or playing it. Watching it, it's kind of hard. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, like if we were there playing the game, it would be then fun. These and they play defense at half speed, so it's not like they're really you know a yeah. ton of effort on both sides. It's kind of hard it's to just watch. It's like the NBA All-Star game when these guys stop oh, trying. Yeah, there's they, the dime to Jamar Chase. Then they play Chase. for one quarter, and Beautiful. it's fun. Yeah, I don't I mean, know. I guess because this is what you do. You, you play competitively with this as well, right? Right. This is what you do. Yes. I don't Number know. two I, team I mean, in the country. Listen, flight football is great, but you know what else is great? Tackle football. <laughs> seeing Sean Taylor take out the kicker in the Pro Bowl back in the day. That was the best. Anyways, that's been our show, guys. I've been Brady Matthews. Uh, Chris Manos, do you want to leave them with any parting words? Uh, I got nothing for you, man. I really, nice. I'm really, i glad we touched on the Carl Weathers thing. Ray R.I.P. Great Carl Weathers. Yeah, rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Um, Ray? Yeah, you can find me at Ray Sherwood 1. Thank you, Brady, for having me again. And uh, uh, always, As always. Um, yeah, we'll tune in next week. Malik, what do you got for the kids at home? Uh, just kids. follow me on Instagram at It's Me Malik. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout out to them Cleveland Cavaliers. Longest active winning streak in the NBA right now. Five wins. Uh, but, actually, uh, actually uh, the Clippers. <laughs> don't don't leave out the Clippers. They only have a four-game winning streak. But also, <laughs> get you a vault. Unlock your brain. <laughs> this guy. Uh, guys, thank you so much. I've been Brady Matthews. If you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your grandma, your grandpa, anyone that wants to watch sports and comedy. We're here for you. We have new clips. We have new reels. We have new stories. We have it all for you. So please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys on Friday. Thank you so much. Take care.